Whoa. I did not know that was going to be a tie. Should I trim it then, Pam? Welcome back to My Cupcake Addiction. I don't normally go this far into character, but today we are paying tribute to all things Willy Wonka. The great Gene Wilder passed away and I thought it only fitting to do a serious tribute where I went a little above and beyond in the costume department to all things Willy Wonka. It was one of my absolute favorite childhood movies and I think it may have shaped my love of candy. Today I'm going to show you guys how to make an awe-inspiring, over-the-top, illusion effect, double-sided, rainbow surprise inside Willy Wonka cake. Brace yourselves, it's about to get very sweet in here. Alright, I'm back to normal. The things that you're going to need to make your Wonka cake, you'll need some buttercream, some ganache, a serrated knife, an offset spatula. I've got fondant in white, light purple, brown and dark purple. A rolling pin, a pizza cutter, a ruler some simple syrup, powdered sugar, dark candy melts, a sharp knife, a thin lightweight candy bar, some fun lollipops, a little parchment paper and copious amounts of candy. There's a few templates in this video so I will leave links to them all down below and I've also got my cake boards. I'll leave all the dimensions again down below. Instead of dowel for the center of my cake, I'm using fat straws or milkshake straws. So much easier to cut. And of course you're going to need cake. I coloured vanilla cake in nine different shades of the rainbow, but feel free to get creative here. I baked in eight inch round tins and each of my layers is about one inch high. They're probably a little taller than I need, but I've got a really creative way to use up all those leftovers, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you want to check out a pretty unique way to use cake scraps. First up, we want to carve our cakes and I always find chilling them for about an hour in the fridge or even the freezer before I carve makes them a lot easier to deal with. You want to level off the top of the cake and then turn it over and using a serrated edge knife just gently trim away any of the browned bottom section. Again with a serrated knife just come around the outside edge, take off as little as you possibly need to, but as much as you have to to get rid of any of those browned edges. You want to repeat that with all nine of your cake layers and then we're going to brush them with simple syrup. This is one part water, one part sugar, and you want to heat it either on the stove or in the microwave until that sugar is completely dissolved. And I just brush mine on using a pastry brush, paying special attention to the outside edges so my cake doesn't dry out. Next, it's time to take our white buttercream frosting and add a very thin crumb coat to catch any of those pesky colored crumbs. All right, it's time to stack. We're actually stacking this cake upside down. So I'm going to take my 10 inch round cake board and I'm going to start at the bottom with the colour that I want to be the top of my cake, which is red. Place that down, don't stick it to the board with anything, and then apply a little bit more buttercream, spreading it out, being sure not to get any of those coloured crumbs through, and then on goes the next colour. Orange, and then more orange. I took a couple of smaller cardboard cake boards and just wrapped them in some foil. I've got one that's six inches and then one that's four. I'm going to apply the cake board, frost it in, and then go on with my next three colours of cake, frosting with buttercream in between. Because I'm doing nine layers here, in between each three layers, I'm going to support my cake using four fat straws. Place them straight down into the cake and then lift them slightly, snip them off so they're all the same length and pop them back down. That'll just help bear the weight. And then on go my final three colours. Again with four more straws for extra support and then pop that one off into the fridge for at least an hour. If you can do longer, do longer because it's going to make carving it so much easier. No, you don't get to have a snooze, there's still plenty to be done while the cake's chilling out. So instead of using a cake board for underneath this cake, we're going to use a regular dinner plate. It's got the raised edges which means it's actually going to give us that really cute little kind of curled up brim of the hat. Take your dark purple fondant, sprinkle down some powdered sugar and roll it out nice and thin here. I just used a napkin dipped in water just to wet the plate or you can brush it with that simple syrup. It's just going to give your fondant something to stick to. And then lay the fondant carefully over the plate. Be very careful not to disturb the edge of the plate because that's going to be the brim of your hat and it's going to look kind of weird if there's finger marks in it. Smooth the fondant down and then tuck it over the edges and so that we can neaten up behind the plate because you want this to curl down underneath. I just rested a bowl in the very centre and then flipped my plate over. 
This helps to protect those edges and no one's going to see the mark the bowl leaves in the fondant because there's going to be cake on top of it. I chose to display my whole cake on quite a large cake board because it really allows me to increase the size of the cake and it gives me more decorating space. Sprinkle down some more of your powdered sugar, roll out that green fondant as thin as you like, brush the board with some water or simple syrup and then just lay the fondant over. Trim around the edges to make it nice and neat and you've got yourself, I'm going to call it Willy Wonka's Candy Garden or the base for it. Taking your white fondant now, we're going to make our W. So I've just cut around my Wonka template using a sharp knife and then I'm going to sprinkle down a little bit of that powdered sugar, roll my white fondant out nice and thin and using my X-Acto or super sharp Stanley knife, I'm going to cut right around that template. Once your cake's nice and firm and that buttercream's set, use a serrated edge knife to carve around. You want to create like a tapered top coming down to a wider base. So I just grabbed a little dish or a small bowl and use that as a bit of a guide so I get a nice round top and it's about an inch, inch and a half smaller than the circumference of my top cake. Something like this. Once you're happy with your shape, you want to take some of your chocolate ganache now and if it's set super firm, feel free to give it a microwave for 15 seconds at a time and stir it vigorously so it's nice and soft and doesn't pull at that cake. It's a pretty tall cake. I chose chocolate ganache because this is owed to Willy Wonka and it feels like it would be completely wrong to do any other flavor. With your thicker coat of ganache in place, I'm using a long metal ruler or you could also use a cake scraper here, but I feel like rulers are something that we all have. Using your ruler really shape that ganache so that your cake kind of looks like a cone but without the point on it. Make sure that you get down at eye level and spin your cake around so that it's as nice and neat and even on all sides as possible. Once you're happy with the shape, I like to take a long jug of boiling hot water and I rest my ruler in there. Be careful, these get kind of hot, but they're super long. So in my opinion, it's a good trade-off. I like to use a little bit of paper towel so I don't burn my fingers. And then you'll see as I smooth, I'm literally just shaving off the very, very top layer of chocolate, but I'm revealing a perfectly beautifully smooth layer of firm chocolate ganache underneath. Once you're happy with the shape, pop that off into the fridge for 30 minutes. I wouldn't go any longer, it'll make your fondant sweat, but 30 minutes will be a nice amount of time to set up that ganache and make it easier to put fondant on. So I made you guys these little Wonka bar templates, which I will leave a link to down below, but I like to take mine off my candy bar until I'm sure that I'm not gonna leave any fingerprints on. So that's not gonna go back on till last minute. I covered my candy bars in a little bit of silver foil and then because I kind of wanted a super gold golden ticket and I couldn't get that on a home printer, I just got some gold foil paper and kind of cut it. You're really only gonna see the tip of it poking out underneath that Wonka bar. I applied it with a little bit of tape, but I'm gonna flip that back now so that I can make the illusion part. Lay your Wonka bar on your piece of parchment, just slightly on an angle, and then I put my dark candy melts into a snap seal bag and just snipped off kind of a generous tip. I'm gonna trace the outline of what looks a little bit like a chocolate waterfall to make a chocolate waterfall. Just do this to eye. I kind of made these nice big blobby sides, but I left the bottom of it quite straight because that's going to go into my cake. Make this pretty thick. It's got to hold up under its own weight. And as you're filling in the outline, really go crazy on making like big swirls and drip kind of looking textures because we really want this to resemble an actual waterfall. Set that one at room temperature rather than in the fridge because the fridge will cause the chocolate to contract and you'll end up with a wonky lean on your Wonka waterfall. Once it's set, you can flip your waterfall over on that piece of parchment. The waterfall side is fine just as it is, but the back, it's kind of boring and you're going to have these little air pockets in it. So I took copious amounts of Wonka inspired candy in the brightest colours I can find and I'm just going to dab a little tiny bit of that dark candy melt on the back of each and use them to A, cover up any blemishes in my chocolate and B, create an absolutely dazzling candy effect for the other side of my illusion. So no matter which way you look at this cake, it's going to be absolutely adorable. With your illusion done, our boards covered, our cake chilled, it's time to cover. Don't freak out here. We've done it upside down so it's going to be a much easier shape than you'd think to cover. Sprinkle down a generous amount of powdered sugar or cornstarch and roll that fondant out. Don't go too crazy thin here or you'll see any lumps and bumps underneath. If you want to measure the circumference of the bottom of your cake, it's a good idea, even if you just use a piece of string to make sure that your piece is long enough. There is nothing worse than having a too short piece of fondant once it's already on the cake. Trim the very bottom edge and the two sides as best as you can so at least they're neat 
and then wrap the fondant around a long rolling pin. Once your cake is shining with sugar syrup, you want to take your rolling pin and lift it up onto the side of your cake. Carefully, but quickly, and this can be a little bit of an awkward maneuver, so feel free to ask someone for help. Wrap it around the outside of the cake. As soon as you've got the fondant on, just run your hands up and down the outside edges to smooth it off. And I'm just going to take a sharp knife and slice all the way down, cutting those two layers at the one time. You can pull away any excess here and they should join up quite nicely. Once you've joined it up, you can trim off any excess on both the top and bottom and then I'm going to use just a cake smoother here just to really smooth out and push any air bubbles out of the way. So my coat of fondant is super nice and really beautiful and smooth. Put a little bit of ganache on the top of your cake, which is actually about to become the bottom of your cake and just make sure it's super thin and not too close to the outside edges so it doesn't sphere. Take your covered plate and flip it upside down. Again, be really mindful of fingerprints here and gently place it straight down in the center or the top bottom of your cake. Because I know I don't want to handle my plate very much at all, I'm also going to apply a generous amount of ganache to the bottom of the plate and then I'm going to place my green covered final presentation board on top, kind of making this weird upside down stack. And this is going to be heavy, but we are going to flip together. Three, two, one. So we flipped and nothing terrible happened. You want to take a sharp knife now and you're going to just slide it to remove the suction that's being caused by the fondant and ganache around that red layer of cake. Once you're happy that you've released the board, simply pull it off. Now for the top section of our cake. I'm going to roll quite a thick piece of fondant here, again with the powdered sugar. I'm going to clear off my bench and then flip it so that I don't have any corn flour on the side that's going to be the top. But I'm going to use this plate to kind of be my template and I know it's going to dig into the fondant so I want it on the bottom side. I'm going to use a pizza cutter just to cut very neatly and as straight up and down as I possibly can, ever so slightly larger than my plate because I know my plate's a tiny bit smaller than the top of my cake. A little thin layer of ganache and keep it as thin and as flat as possible on top of that red layer. Again, do not go too close to the outside edges of your cake or you're going to end up with like ganache peeking through between your two purple layers and we definitely don't want that. Pick up your circular disc and treat it carefully, you don't want to stretch it out of shape. Place it on top and then just run your hands around the outside edge to make sure that it's as nice, smooth and flush with the top line of the cake as possible. You can use a cake smoother at any time here to really smooth down that fondant, get rid of any air bubbles and make that top piece really become one with the rest of the hat. In my opinion, this is always the best part. All of the hard, stressful work is done, apart from applying the illusion, but now we're ready to do all of the fun decorations on our beautiful Wonka hat cake. It's not just going to be a Wonka hat though, this one's got flair. Sprinkle down a bit of powdered sugar and roll out your light purple fondant really nice and thin and long. Thin and long, we're going to make the band. Make this piece a little bit thicker than you actually want the band to be because we're kind of going to ripple it so that it looks like a fabric band. I'm going to take my ruler and I'm just going to slice off so I've got really nice straight edges on both sides. On a cutting board or my husband will kill me. One thing to bear in mind with this cake, and honestly it's something about it that I really love, is that one side is going to be a beautiful, nice purple Wonka hat, and the other side's going to be almost entirely covered with a chocolate waterfall. So if you have one side, I mean I guarantee you'll have one side that you like slightly better than the rest. Not that we play favourites, but my seam is going to go under that chocolate waterfall, as is anywhere that I think is less than perfect on my cake, and I'm going to try and put my best side forward. I always do. I'm just pinching my fondant in a couple of little ripples to give it a little bit of texture. Before I stick that on, I want to position my W. Like I said, I cut mine out slightly in advance and because of that, it's actually really nice and firm, which is going to enable me to be able to kind of kick that little curl of the Wonka off a little bit. It also makes it a bit easier to position. Also think about where you want to stick your W. I had a tiny little bit of cracking in my fondant, so my W is going to cover that. There's no such thing as a mistake, just a well-covered piece of cake. So a little bit of water on the back of my W. Completely stuck down is totally fine, but you can see by letting my W set overnight, I've actually ended up with the ability to kind of make it look like it's not actually stuck on the sides of the cake, it's kind of three-dimensional a little bit. Taking a little bit more water here, I'm going to place it around the bottom, being careful not to drip it onto my plate at all. Just around this bottom edge, and that's going to be used to stick on my band. 
picking up my drape from the centre. At the back, I'm just going to trim off, being careful not to cut my plate fondant. I kind of lied when we said all the stressful stuff is done. This is the most stressful part because we're adding the illusion, but don't freak out. If it happens to break, if anything goes wrong, you are literally like five minutes away from making a new one. Guide hole, massive knife in Wonka purple. I don't even know how I managed that. So I am going to try and find about the middle of my cake. And I'm gonna come down. Oh, this feels so wrong. What this does is it really just paves the way for my illusion to go in so that my illusion doesn't have to have so much pressure on it. I like to make sure that I've kind of made it a little bit of space. So my waterfall side is gonna face back. My fun candy side is gonna face forward. And I'm gonna try to just kind of touch it on the side so I don't leave big fingerprints and work quickly here so that I don't melt through. Slowly does it. Coax it in. It already looks so cute. We have more candy to add. So for the back half, and like I said, this is my not so great half. So I've got my big seam. I've got where my little ribbon for my hat joined and I've got I'm gonna say the good side of my Wonka bar illusion. We're gonna now roll out some brown fondant. So I'm gonna start with a shape that's kind of a little bit like a triangle or a bell, because I know that I want fat at the bottom and thin at the top. So I might as well start with that shape and I may save myself having to cut it. As I roll my shape out, I'm really coaxing the fondant where I want it to go. So you can get your hands underneath and you can just kind of pull it and stretch it a little bit while it's still quite thick. Don't do that once it's thin. And then just rolling widthways where I want it to get wider and lengthways where I want it to get longer. Once I've got the basic shape, I'm gonna clean up any excess powdered sugar. And that way, I'm not gonna get any on my nice dark colored fondant. All right, we wanna add a little bit of texture. So I'm just gonna use just the top end of my pizza cutter. I mean, you can use anything, just make sure it's kind of blunt. And I'm just gonna create like little drippy waterfall effects. I'll go once with the narrow side and then I'll come back and go with the fat side. Kind of add some streaks and things. That scene where Augustus Gloop falls into the chocolate waterfall. I know it was sad for his parents, but I couldn't help but thinking, what an amazing way to go. I mean, you gotta go, right? I'm not gonna trim the sides. I'm not gonna trim the base. I am sticking it on like that. So working quickly, I wanna remove my cake from its turntable because I don't want it moving around for this. I'm gonna paint a little bit of water and then I'm gonna attach my fondant. I'm gonna trim off just a nice straight top because that's where it's gonna meet up with my actual water illusion. And I wanna make sure that it's no wider or narrower really than the top. Immediately secure your top and then also this side section. And then you can kind of let it fall away. Again, securing to the plate. Everywhere that you secure this fondant just takes the pressure off the layer above it so it doesn't rip. There is nowhere for me to stand where I can actually see you guys behind this cake. It's massive and I kind of like that in a cake. From here, you can decorate however you like. I've given you the blank canvas, but of course I'll give you a couple of suggestions. So I found some little Oompa Loompas that I printed out on kind of a thicker cardstock and I'm just gonna glue them together. So I'm just gonna use some craft glue, but I'm also gonna give them two little stilts just up in their feet so that I can make them stand up in something. I also need to do a small standing area for Oompa. So I'm just gonna roll a straight out lump of fondant. And then I'm just gonna add some grassy like texture by just kind of snipping at it. Be careful not to snip your hands here. I have done that, it is quite painful. Simple, easy, little grassy knoll. My fondant's pretty sticky, so I'm just gonna stick it straight onto the board. And my Oompa Loompa's made out of paper. And they're short, so he's not that heavy. In goes my little Loompa. I'm gonna call him Bob. A simple lollipop on the other side to balance things out. Couple of little candies. But I don't wanna go too crazy on this because I think there's so much going on with this cake that we really don't need to. Whichever way you look at this cake, it's utterly adorable. The Wonka side, or you wanna go to Loompa Land. I love how much we have going on in this cake. You've got your illusion, you've got your rainbow, you've got your Wonka, you've got your Oompa Loompa Land. There is everything Wonka. There's even a golden ticket. If you guys love this video, make sure you subscribe for two new videos every week. If you loved this cake, I want you to let me know which was your favorite part of it down below. If you make it, hit me up on Instagram with the hashtag MyCupCakeAddiction. I love to see your sweets and bakes and I especially love it when you make things from my videos. Have an awesome day guys and as always, thanks very much for watching. 
Jacob, do you like the cake? You've already pre-ordered your copy of Sweet Celebrations. Good on Palompa.